Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to take the code for this smart contract and put it into the Ethereum blockchain. In my previous video, I already explained what the purpose of the contract is and what each line of code does. Here, I'm going to explain in more detail two concepts that I already introduced in that video. These are compilation and deployment. If you haven't watched it yet, the link is in the description of this video. Let's see how to compile and deploy our code. Compilation is a process that turns code from a high level programming language to code that a machine can understand. And now in English. A high level language, it's just a language that is easy for humans to understand. For example, Solidity. It reads like English. You can see keywords like contract, address, constructor, payable, external, public, function. This is easy for us to understand, but machines do not understand this directly. They have their own languages that they can run efficiently, but these are too difficult for humans to use. This is why compilation is needed. You can see compilation as a translation between two languages, from humans' languages to machine languages. And now to the practice. In order to compile a contract, we need to click on this tab. We can choose the version of the compiler we want. We specified the Solidity version 0.8.1, so here it is. We can choose the language. Remix lets us use Solidity and Yule. Let's stick to Solidity. And the rest can stay as it is. So let's click Compile now. And this screen, which means it's already compiled, is very, very quick. And in order to deploy, we come here to this tab. The first thing to notice is that we have multiple environments. We have three. Let's start with JavaScript VM. This is going to create a blockchain within our browser. Everything that we do in this blockchain will live in memory. This means that if you refresh your browser, you're going to lose all the data because nothing is stored permanently. This is completely fine for testing purposes and it also provides very good performance. With this environment, we get also lots of accounts with 100 Ether each. We can use any of them to deploy the contract and to send money to it. So we just need to click this deploy button. And here it is, the contract is deployed. Now we can start interacting with the contract. Let me open this first. Get a bit bigger. Okay. So here we see the interface of the contract. This is the function that we can call. And we can call withdraw. Since one year has not passed, obviously, we're going to get the error message saying that one year has not passed. And here it is, which is exactly what we expected. To show you how to interact with this contract, I'm going to change the one year requirement to just five seconds. Since we have changed the contract, we need to go back and compile it again and then deploy it. So compile, ready, now. We can delete this contract to keep things clean. And we click Deploy. And now we have it again. It's very fast because everything happens inside your browser. Let's click Withdraw. And we don't get any error message now. We don't get any money back because we haven't deposited any to the contract, but the contract is doing what we wanted. So let's send 10 Ether to the contract. In order to do that, we come to Value, and we say 10. And we change the unit from Y to Ether. Y is just a different unit. It's just a different way of measuring the same thing, like saying centimeters and inches or kilometers and miles. At the end of the day, it's exactly the same. So let's click Transact. And now we have sent the money. Since this contract is running on your browser, we can really connect to the blockchain to see what the balance of the account is. As a workaround, we can use this code and I'm going to copy paste into the contract now to see what the balance of the account is. If you don't understand exactly what this means, it's completely fine. Most of these terms are explained in my previous video. But for now, just assume that if we call this function, get balance, we're going to see what the balance of the contract is. Since we have introduced some changes to our contract, we need to go back and compile it and deploy it. So let's delete this one. We will not need it. Go back. Okay, let's clean this. We've compiled. Now let's come to deploy. Deploy the contract. And here it is very quick. So now let's send 10 Ether to the contract. 
and here it is we can click get balance now we see the balance of the contract this 10 ether measured in weight we can see that the account has gone from 100 ether to 89.9999 so it's not exactly 90 because every time you send a transaction there are costs associated to that transaction this is the fees and now if we click withdraw we get back to 99.9999 which means we have gotten all the ether back and if we click it balance the balance of the contract is zero all right so now we're going to see the second environment which is injected web3 here we're going to use metamask in order to connect to the ethereum network if you don't have a metamask wallet i already created a video that you can watch in order to learn how to install metamask and how to create an ethereum wallet for free the link is in the description of this video i'm going to show you the account i'm going to use it's this demo account in the Robson test network where I have around 5 Ether. This is test Ether, of course. Since we are going to be using this account to create transactions and send Ether, the balance of my account is going to be affected. And this is fine because it's test Ether and it doesn't cost us any money. We can always get more test Ether back. If you want to know how to get free test Ether, I already published a video where I explain the process, and the link is also in the description of this video. Now that we have set up the environment, let's deploy the contract the process is exactly the same click deploy and now since we're interacting with the actual test network metamask is going to ask us to confirm the transaction because we need to pay the fees from our account so we click confirm and this is generating the transaction that is going to put our contract into the robston testnet and now it's complete. There you go. We have the address of the contract. We can copy it, clicking it here, and we can go to Etherscan. There is a link in the description of this video to access this website. We paste it here. We search for it. And yes, this is the account for the contract. We see that the balance is zero Ether and there are no transactions. So let's just create a transaction that sends some Ether to this contract. We go back to the contract. Let's send, let's say I have around five ether, so let's send three. We open the contract and click transact. Of course, every time we need to create a transaction, MetaMask is going to ask us to confirm because of the fees that we have to pay. We click confirm. Apparently there is some maintenance in progress, so this is going to be slower than usual. So here it is, we see that the balance has been updated to 3 Ether. Uh, I think it's because of the maintenance, uh, it's a bit unfortunate, but there are no transactions here. If this was all fine, there would be one transaction to create the contract, and now the other transaction that we used to send this 3 Ether to the contract. But still, we can see the balance of the account has reflected the changes. Now if we go back to the contract, if we click withdraw, we will retrieve this 3 Ether back into our account. Minus, of course, the fees. So let's just click withdraw. This creates a transaction. Now we have to confirm that we are happy with this fees. Click confirm. And let's refresh here. And here it is. The balance is updated to zero ether, which means we got all back into our account and we can also see it here. And in MetaMask, it's already, yes, here it is, it's updated. Now that we are done with this environment, let's have a quick look at the last one, Web3 provider. Yeah, so here, as you can see, this is a bit more complex. And the idea is that you can use this provider to connect to an external node. We will not cover it in detail in this video because it requires access to an external node, but I just want you to know that this option exists and you can use it to connect to an external node. This node can also be running in your machine or in any other machine whose address you know. You can still deploy to production using Injected Web3. So if you go back, you select Injected Web3, you come to MetaMask and you change from Propsent to Mainnet. I have zero ether in this mainnet, but you can use the exact same process to deploy your contract to production. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a comment, click like and subscribe, 
because you don't want to miss the next videos to learn more about Ethereum and cryptocurrencies. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video. This video is part of a free comprehensive course on cryptocurrencies that we have put together at teachyourselfcrypto.com. Check it out to learn more about Bitcoin, Ethereum, smart contracts, decentralized finance, and much more. The link is in the description of this video.